Okay, my friends, this is going to be a massive, all-inclusive, end times, antichrist, false prophet video. So it's going to be a good one, a long one, but one you want to hang on to and bookmark and flag and share with everybody. It's going to be just, it's going to include everything. A lot of scripture too, so here we go. Matthew chapter 24, the entire chapter of the King James Version Bible. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. His disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be one left here, one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when these things shall be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and the end of the world. And Jesus answered unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and deceive many. Right now, there are at least twenty people claim to be Christ roaming the earth right now everywhere. Okay, I'm going to go through this and start interjecting things to show you exactly how close we are to Christ's return. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. There's never been a, a time in the history of this world where we have gotten so many wars and rumors of wars. I'm talking about hundreds and thousands of times more than any time in the history of this world. It's everywhere. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Never, ever, ever again have there been so many nations rising against nations. And look at the Middle East. Look at the whole world. Look at the famines and pestilences and plagues, crop failure everywhere. Never been like this worldwide, ever. And the earthquakes in diverse places in all around the world. Never, ever, ever been close to this. <coughs> Excuse me. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. 200,000 plus, my friends, 200,000 plus heroes of the faith are martyred, killed for their faith in Jesus Christ, for only owning a Bible, for saying Jesus Christ's name, for having a church service, for telling someone about him. It happens everywhere, and, we're, we, and we are hated. True Christians are hated everywhere around the world in Christ's name. This filthy nation of Sodom and Gomorrah that I live in, uh, used to be called America, we're hated more and more every day. True Christians are. Most Christians aren't hated because they don't display Christ in their life. They aren't Christians, representatives of Jesus Christ. They're just Christians by name only. The Christians who represent Christ as our Lord and Savior were persecuted daily. And then many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. It happens all the time. You see Christians. That get. I had a sister tell me yesterday, uh, a, a so-called Christian got mad at her for saying she would pray for her. She just, just wanted to pray for her in general and blocked her on Facebook. And all the hatred and betrayal, not just among Christians, but among the world as well. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Look at the internet. Look at Jim Tarpey, the so-called self-professed third eagle of the apocalypse. Look at, at uh, Jonathan Kleck. Look at Pastor, Pastor Dave Hyung. Look at Harold Camping. Look at Jan Boshoff, and the list goes on and on and on and on. There's millions of false prophets all over YouTube and Facebook everywhere. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Love is hardly found anywhere anymore. Hatred is everywhere. Love is truly wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Right now, the gospel has been preached around the entire world, my friends. They've gotten Bibles now in languages of pygmy tribes in the Amazon. The, the gospel has been preached everywhere. We're waiting for God to give the word right now. We are right on the doorstep of eternity. When ye shall therefore see the abomination of desolation, spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. That's going to be during the Great Tribulation. We won't see that yet. The rapture will happen first. The Bible proves that. I've got and I've got a, a text on that, with dozens and dozens and dozens of scripture that prove 100% zero doubt that the rapture is pre-tribulation. If you want to know the truth and stop believing lies and stop arguing, message me. I'll give you that proof. <clears throat> Let him which be in Judah flee to the mountains. Let him which be on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to give the, and them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither in the Sabbath day. This is all tribulation again after the rapture. For then shall be great tribulation, such as, as was not since, since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever will shall be. It's going to be horrible, my friends. You don't want to be here. 
And except those days shall be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. If God didn't didn't intervene and, and stop his judgments in the tribulation, the whole world would die, every person, every animal, every being. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch if it was possible, they should deceive the very elect. Again, this is a tribulation, the false prophet is going to be deceiving most of the world, including the left behind Christians. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And whosoever the carcass is, wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. There shall appear the sign of the Son of Man, praise the Lord, in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now this is the second coming of Christ. This is, this is not the pre-tribulation rapture. This is at the end of the tribulation. Don't get it confused, because so many Christians do. And again, I've got proof. If you want to know the proof and stop believing lies, message me. I'll send it to you for free. I know people charge for stuff. That's why I say for free. I don't charge for nothing. Christ never charged a penny for the gospel, and neither do I. I don't accept uh, donations on my, any of my ministries either. Christ never accepted donations for his ministry. I'm not going to accept it. People need to stop fleecing pe other Christians. He shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the one end of the heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. This is talking about Israel being reborn again in 1948. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. A biblical generation is 70 years or 80 years if you have strength to endure. The 80 years if you have strength to endure was from 1938 when the persecution of the Jews began in Nazi Germany to 1948. That was the Holocaust period. That was the 10 years to endure before Israel began. Now when Israel became a nation in 1948, that 70 year generation is 2018. That makes 2018 the terminal end, end time possibility of the rapture. And remember, the closer we get to the rapture, the less likely it is this, that Christ will come like a thief in the night. And all the signs are here everywhere. We're approaching the end of this generation. The rapture is imminent, my friends. And heaven and, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Jesus don't even know the time of the rapture, only God. As, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the, son, the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. We're here right now, my friends, and understand, all the world's banks are about to crash, all the world's economies are about to crash, all of the world's food supplies are, 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 are getting short every day. The honeybees are dying that pollinate the crops. People, How much longer can people be eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage before it stops, before they're not able to? Because when, people, because when things fall apart, people aren't going to be concerned about eating and drinking you know, lusciously and marrying and giving in marriage. They're not going to be able to do that during the Great Tribulation when, when all hell breaks loose on earth. That means the rapture is imminent, my friends. It has to happen while this stuff is still happening. The window is very, very small. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. There shall be two in the field, one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what hour what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye not think, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give him, him meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall be, begin to smite his fellow servants, and, and to eat, drink, and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus is saying, those who are ready, saved by his precious blood, repenting of sins after we're saved, the way the Bible says hundreds of times we have to. It's not Paul Kidd saying it, it's the Holy Bible saying it. 
living the way the Bible says, cover to cover, will be raptured and will be ruling with Jesus Christ. Those who are backslidden and those who get drunken and fall away from the, from the, from the Lord, drunken is any kind of a sin that's not repented of. Jesus will come. You'll be left behind Christians who are backslidden. He'll cut you asunder and there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Where is that? It's in hell. Praise the Lord. So, woo, that's 51 verses. That's Matthew. Covered it very well. Now, let's break down Revelation. I have to get a drink of tea here. I'm very, very parched from reading all that and, and, and commenting. Okay. Revelation chapter 13, the entire book. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was unto like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, his mouth the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power in his seat and great authority. The dragon is Satan, the beast is the Antichrist. And I saw one of his heads as if it were wounded to death. His deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. I'm going to include a video here, a video link I want you to watch that will tell you some uh, distinct possibilities of verse 3 here. I'll put it in the comments of the video. And when they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months, three and a half years. He opened his mouth and blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. It was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Our leader of this nation right now, Mr. Obama, already has made war with the saints. He's already said when he gets reelected, he's going to make a war on Christmas, which is a war on Christians. And I do, do believe, which you probably already know, if you watch my videos or follow my ministries, you do know, I believe Mr. Obama is none other than the future Antichrist, and I'm going to go in depth in this video. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. He spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to, to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. This is the false prophet, who I believe to be the, the next and last pope, and I'm going to cover that in depth after I read the scripture as well. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause, that as many should not would worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now they've got robots right now. They've got holograms. Those of you who have seen the big Tupac hologram, they're 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 fixing this stuff and improving on it by the minute, by the hour, and by the day. They have technology now where they can broadcast an, an image of the beast all around the world on big screens everywhere to make people worship them. Everything's in place right now, my friends. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man should buy or sell, save he have he had the mark or name of the beast or the number of his name. I believe there's a great chance that the Obamacare RFID chip of the spring of 2013 very well may be this mark of the beast. Am I saying for sure? No, but I believe it very well may be because if, and if Obama's the Antichrist, you can bank on it that it is. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 600, three score, and six. His number is 666. Barack Obama's name, Barack Hussein Obama. It's 18 letters divided by 3 is 6. 3 6 is 6 6 6. All right, there's our scripture. <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of scripture, but it needed to be covered. So, let's cover the false prophet first. Came upon an article today where the Pope is speaking to speaking in Islam in Arabic 
to the Muslims, first ever, never, never before done. And understand that the false prophet is going to have to cross all boundaries. He's got to speak to every religion of the world to get them all under this under the one flag of worshiping the Antichrist, the image of the beast. Now there was a guy named Malachi. He was a prophet of the 1100s of the Catholic Church. He wasn't your your, your Catholic today, which is a is a Satan-led religion. He was in the old school where he actually had the gift of healing. It was said, and the gift of prophecy. This guy prophesied every single pope that would ever be in the world from that time on. They sealed the prophecy, opened it up several hundred years later. This guy was on the money every single time. Google the Malachi, Malachi prophecy, M-A-L-A-C-H-Y prophecy. This guy named something about every pope that would happen, in his, that would happen with him uh, that, that described his life, some type of thing that described his death or other things to do with his life. He was right on the money every single time. And this pope we have right now, the Catholic Church purposely tried to pick a pope that would not match Mal Malachi's prophecy because they wanted to end it. They're getting scared because they don't like to hear prophecies of what they're doing. They said, pick somebody that's not from Italy. They got, a, they got this German guy because there's no way he would be the man of the olive. But you know what? They looked back into his ancestry after he got elected pope. Way back in his ancestry, they were known as, as the olive. So now this guy is, is the pope of the olive. He's matches prophecy of Malachi perfectly. And Malachi says, this pope we have right now is the, is the second to the last pope. The last pope that replaced this guy, he said, is called Peter the Roman or the false prophet. And this guy will lead the church and the world into oblivion. And then it says, the end. This pope right now is sick. He's very sick. He's very tired. He's very old. They elected a very old pope because this, this guy couldn't have ruled for very long because the rapture is so imminent, my friends. That's why they elected a very old pope. God's hand is in everything that happens in the world. These last days, his fingerprints are everywhere. So this guy's old. He's sick. He wants to retire. The first time ever a pope's even talked about retiring. There have been death threats on his life uh, to, uh, to uh, assassinate him. He doesn't go out and do much anymore because of his sickness and his, and his tiredness. There's all kinds of scandal all over the Vatican when his butler started exposing him for all of his documents. All the molestation of children from the, from the Catholics is spreading like wildfire more than ever before. Infighting among the bishops who, and the cardinals who are going to be one of the cardinals who will replace him as the final pope. It, the Vatican is in disarray. It's going bankrupt. First time ever. They were, they, they were the, the richest entity in the world. Now they're going bankrupt. Everything is falling apart in the Vatican. There needs somebody to step forward and fix things. That's going to be the last pope. I'm, 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 I'm as sure of that as I am that Obama is the future Antichrist. I'm 99% sure of that. And the last pope is going to have to not only be get the Catholics on board, but the Muslims and the Christians and every race everywhere. And this guy is already doing it now with speaking his, his precursor by speaking Islam to the Muslims. So it's right on the doorstep, my friends. Now let's go with the big gun, the Antichrist. I love this. <clears throat> People tell me all the time, well, you know, Paul Kidd, uh, there's no way Obama can be the Antichrist. I think it's Prince Harry or Prince Philip or Prince Charles or uh, I think it's Erdogan. Yeah, Erdogan, the, the ruler of Turkey. You know what? I really don't care what you think, and I don't care what I think. Let's be honest. All that matters is what we can prove from the Holy Bible. If you can show me someone that matches every single characteristic the Bible talks about the future Antichrist, like Mr. Obama does, every one he matches perfectly, if you can show me that, I'll listen to you then, and then there'll be another candidate besides Obama. He'll never be replaced as a candidate because he matches all the criteria as well. So don't tell me all your, your theories, wild theories. Listen to what I'm about to describe in the Bible, and you tell me this does not match Obama, and you tell me somebody else that it does. Okay. He's going to be, first of all, the Antichrist is going to be more stout than other predecessors and politicians. Now, when stout, it's not talking about stout like big muscular He-Man. Stout is talking about he's going to be more stern, more fierce-faced, more, more just, you know, have that, that, that look about him. It doesn't matter what size he is. He can be skin and bones, which Obama is, but he is definitely stern and fierce-faced. This will be found in Daniel 7.20. He'll be generally different and unique among politicians. <laughs> He's the first ever African-American ruler of any 
large nation in the history of this planet. There, you can't get any more different or unique than that. That is a huge red flag. Daniel 7.24 is where you'll find it at. He's going to be a great unifier who effectively appeals to people across lines of division. He'll be revered by all except true Christians. That will be found in Revelation 13.3. Obama has people across the whole planet loving him. He's unifying Muslims. He's turned his country into a Muslim country. I believe he is their secret behind the scenes ruler. He's unifying all kinds of different false religions and faiths. He's, ruling, he's, he's unifying everybody. And, and, everybody, and he does have people who don't like him, but for the most part, people love Obama except for saints. True Christians hate Obama. They pray for him, but they hate, they hate the way that he lives and who he represents, Satan. Again, right on the money. He'll seek total control for his own glory, not Democratic Republic or anything really for the people. Obama is not for anybody. He, all he is is for himself and for his master, his little g-god, Satan. He's, he does everything. It's not for our Democratic Republic or anything. What he does is for himself. He's trying to ruin our country from the inside out. He, he succeeds in everything that he does. And people say, oh, how can Mr. Obama be so wrong about the wars in Afghanistan and be so wrong about all these things? He's not wrong. He's done it on purpose. He sabotaged us on purpose. He has not failed at anything he's tried to do. You'll find it in 2 Thessalonians 2.4. He'll be an icon of earthly success. Again, he'll succeed at anything he does. Obama has succeeded at everything. At Harvard Law, he was the, the, the head of the political arm there. He, was, he became a community organizer and boom, a U.S. senator out of nowhere. I mean, with, with no experience or nothing. And then a couple years later, President of the United States. And all of the things he's doing, whether it's good or bad, he's succeeding. Everything he does is all according to his plan. So if something happens bad, Obama is sabotaging it. You can bank on that. Look in Daniel 8.24 for the reference. He politically rises from a subnational leadership position like a governor or a senator. <laughs> exactly what this guy has done. Unheard of to see how he's rose to power so quickly. People are so blind that can't see who Obama is. Look in Daniel 7.8, 11, 8, and 9 for that. He'll be shrewd, cunning, deceitful, skilled in intrigue. Mr. Obama has got those down to a science. He is shrewd. He's cunning. He's the biggest liar I've seen in my life, and he's full of intrigue. This guy matches it to the T. Look in Daniel's 8.25. He'll be empowered through others. Obama is empowered through others. He was given the seat of the President of the United States, but his power goes through the Congress. It goes through Senate. It goes through all the Muslims, the Muslim Brotherhood that he's empowering across the entire planet. His power is not his own, and Satan also empowers this guy. Look at Daniel 8, 24. He'll be stubborn, relentless, a mega ambitious visionary with far-reaching goals. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. First of all, he came out with his um, change we can believe in, a big visionary change. Yeah, he's changed us all right. He's, rotten, he's making us rotten from the inside out. Now he's forward, which is a communist socialist manifesto from the Stalin and Lenin and Hitler days. And at the beginning of this year, one of his main uh, th things is peace and safety. <laughs> he's running on a, on, a, on a platform of peace and safety, which is also a key right out of the Bible of the Antichrist. This guy is matching all of the criteria, my friends, to a T, to a T. He'll be vicious, violent, cruel, lacks regard for life. That's going to be more so after he becomes the Antichrist after the rapture. But even so, look at him putting our soldiers, our military in harm's way and letting them get murdered. I believe he's behind all of our SEALs that have been killed and the helicopter crashes and everything else. And he just does, he does, he doesn't care. He's vicious. He, he's violent. He lacks regard for life. He's cruel. He's a big fake, man, a big phone. He claims he's a Christian. He hates Christians. He's trying to destroy us. Look in Daniel 8.25 for that. He's extraordinarily proud and boastful. <laughs> this guy is the most pride-filled, boastful, arrogant person I've seen in my entire life. Look in Daniel 7, 8, 11, 20, and 8, 25. He'll have no desire for women. Now, I know Mr. Obama's married. I know he has two children, but I also know for a fact that all kinds of people have said he used to go to all the gay bathhouses in Chicago. He used to be a boyfriend of the former choir director of the church in and Reverend Jeremiah Wrights in his down low club, which was all the gay guys in the church. A guy came out with proof from a limousine driver that Obama met him in limousines 
for different rides and had sex with Obama in the limousines and in his apartment. There's pictures of Obama basically sitting on other guys' laps like you'd see a guy with his girlfriend. You never see a guy doing that with a wedding ring on, making hand gestures that, that, that sodomites make to show they're taken or married. This guy is as gay as Mary Poppins, okay? Mary Poppins is gay, not that kind of gay, but you know what I mean. He is gay, and he will have no desire for women as far as being a, a sodomite, and I'm, I'm sure it's what this verse means, and you can and you can look it up, Daniel 11, 37. Inwardly, he's a godless megalomaniac. That's what this guy is. He claims to be a Christian. He's a godless megalomaniac. He wants to rule the entire world. He wants to tear our country down. He wants to, to, to rule the Muslims and rule everybody. He is an evil, wicked man. Daniel 7, 21, 25, 8, 10 to 11, 25. A mega liar who actively opposes truth. You know how you tell Mr. You know you can tell Mr. Obama's lying? His lips are moving. This guy lies more than anybody I've seen in my entire life on the face of the planet. Daniel 8, 11, 23, 25. He's a morally bankrupt hedonist. Fits him to a T. Allegorically represented as a conqueror on a white horse. When Mr. Obama was getting ready for his inauguration, the big white horse at the, at the Denver airport, the demonic huge white stallion, was right there. He's had white stallions in different places when he's had huge speeches. He's out, and that's what the Muslims look at their Mahdi as, as conquering a white horse. Mr. Obama fits this to a T as well. Revelation 6.2. He's been foreshadowed by historical types like King Saul, Nebuchadnezzar, Caesar, Hitler. He has. All these guys have led up to Mr. Obama. He'll be a profession, professing Christian empowered by the false prophet and Christian support. Mr. Obama claims to be a Christian. A Christian should be known by their fruit. His fruit is rotten to the core. This guy is not a Christian. He's an evil phony. And when he becomes the Antichrist, which I'm 99% sure he will be, he will be empowered by the false prophet and Christians will support him. 2 Corinthians 11, 3, 15. And finally, his name numerically tallies to 666. Like I said earlier, Barack Hussein Obama, 18 letters, three names, 18 divided by three is six, three sixes, 666. Six, six. Woo! Serious stuff, my friends. Now, let's do a little bit more on Mr. Obama. I've covered it before, but I had a, a, an old webcam that was scratchy. I've got an HD one now. Let's get some good pure HD audio. This guy, when he was running for Senate, U.S. Senate in Chicago, they had billboards up saying the Messiah is finally arrived with big pictures of Mr. Obama. When he was inaugurated as president of this filthy nation, his old stomping grounds in Chicago, their lottery hit. And guess what the winning numbers were? 666. Six, six. Guess what his area code was in Chicago where he lived? 60606. Zero, six, zero, six. Okay, are you, are you guys getting this? When he ran... His format was, yes, we, I don't say the last word, yes, we, starts with a C, ends with an N, because those words, when backmasked, say, thank you, Satan. And I've studied backmasking for over 30 years. I know it's a fact. Google it. Google that term, and you will hear with your own ears. And Mr. Obama is saying it, and he's, millions of people are chanting, yes, we, yes, we. He's got a huge smile on his face. He's saying, yeah, boy. I got everybody thanking my God, Satan, with me for, for helping me to, to make me president of, of the United States. It's, it's there. Google it and hear how spooky and crazy it is. There's a music video with rappers that did it, that did it and actors and actresses. And they're saying, yes, we, and they're, they're thanking Satan backwards. Regular people have done videos, and it says the same thing. Thank you, Satan, backwards. This guy's been the most anti-Christian president ever, the most anti-Jewish president ever. He claims to love the Jews, and he's going to have to claim that. He's got to make a seven-year peace deal with them if he is the Antichrist. And he hates the Jews. He Look at the way he looks at Prime Minister Netanyahu. He hates Christians. He's going to have a war on Christmas, a war on Christians, when he gets reelected. He's not going anywhere. Understand one thing, my friends. If Mr. Obama is a future Antichrist, he's the last president this country will ever see. He's wicked, he's evil, he's filthy, he's terrible. Not going anywhere. He will never give up power. He's got martial law set up. If he wants to declare it, if he feels threatened at all, he set it up through all these under the table Friday afternoons when the medias have closed for the weekend, executive orders. This guy is an evil, dirty, low-down dog. And look at his background. You don't know anything about this guy. He came out of nowhere. No one knows if he was born in this country or not. No one knows where he grew up or what he was. I know for a fact he's a dual citizen of Indonesia and this country because he was buried at Sortoro when he's adopted and it shows 
there's proof that he was a, a uh, Indonesian citizen and went to school there. This guy has just got so many, and also, this has been proven from an out, outside source. It's not the sheriff in, uh, in Arizona. This is somebody who's a private detective. It's been proven that Mr. Obama carries a social security number of someone born in the 1800s that died decades and decades ago. He has their social security number, and it's from Connecticut. He's never lived there before, which is impossible. It's not allowed. There's so many things that are proven that this guy is evil, he's shady, he's crafty behind the scenes, but yet people don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to see what's going on. I'm just so tired of Christians that try to misquote the Bible and say, well, you know, the Antichrist has to be from here or here or here. I gave you the scripture of the Antichrist, and I showed you, and anyone with, with, with any common sense at all can listen to that, look at Mr. Obama and say, whoa, man, that is amazing. Because it is. This guy is matching up to all of the criteria. Just an evil, evil, wicked man that has none of our, none of our, of, of our, nothing good in mind for any of us. He's all in it for himself, all in it for his little G God, Satan. And I could go on and on and on, and I could just keep on telling you things, but there's no need to. If, if all that I've told you right now, you can't understand the truth, you can't see the truth, you can't look through it, I'm never going to convince you. There's always skeptics out there that won't believe. But if you get left behind and you see what I was telling you, then you will believe. And regardless of who the Antichrist is, even if somebody else does show up that matches every criteria and catches up and he's a fellow candidate with Mr. Obama, it won't matter to me. I'm going to be in heaven, praise the Lord, raptured. I won't be here when he takes over. But I see what this guy is doing all the time. I watch what he's doing. These executive orders, like I said, for martial law, he now has it set up where he can declare martial law for anything. And he owns everything in this nation. He owns all the farms, all the crops, the farm equipments, the homes and buildings on, on the farmland. He owns our personal dwellings. He owns all of the munici municipalities, electric, gas, water, heat. Owns all the food. And he never has to pay anybody back for anything that he takes. And he's done many other things as well. Look at all the ammunition that's been bought. Billions of rounds now of ammunition that, that, that would be the equivalent of what you would need for war, which I'm an expert at. I've been in war many, many times with the Marines. And why is this bought for all the all of the homeland stuff? Why is that? Why are there FEMA camps everywhere with guillotines and, and barbed wire that faces outward, inward, to keep people from getting out instead of outward to keep people from getting in like it normally is? Why is there all this crazy stuff going on in this country? All these all of these things with... with um, the rumors of the banking collapse and rumors of all these of, of all the war stuff. Why are they having war games everywhere in all of our cities? And they have tanks and, and black off helicopters and all these kinds of military checkpoints and things happening in our cities. Never been happened before. Why are thousands and thousands of Marines training right now to be martial law keepers to, to replace the police force in this country? Why are all these things happening right now in these last of last days? Why, why is all everything in the world happening the way that it is? If something happens once or twice, it could be a, called a coincidence. If it happens like it is now, my friends, it's not a coincidence. <coughs> Excuse me. Please wake up and see what's going on. Understand the rapture is imminent. This is the most important part of this whole video. The rapture is imminent. Jesus Christ is going to break the skies any second of any day. And if you're not saved by Jesus' blood and living the way the Bible says, like I said, including repenting of your sins after you're saved, You'll be left behind in the world that I've described in these scriptures and these things where you'll have to run for your life. You'll have no food or water, no shelter. You won't have hardly any clothes. You'll be, you'll be beaten, tortured, and have your head chopped off for refusing the mark of the beast. But if you're a Christian, praise the Lord, you'll go to heaven after that. But if you take the mark of the beast, it's the same as marrying Satan and you've doomed yourself to hell forever. Why put yourself through that? Why not come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior today, right now? I'm going to have a, ch a chance for you to do that and pray in this video like I do every video soon. You can pray with me and know that you'll be right and ready to go to heaven. Those who are Christians who live the right way, join me and get out there and reap the harvest, my friends. The harvest is so plentiful it's rotting in the fields because few Christians will go out and witness to others. They're, they're too self-absorbed and too worried about themselves. Me, 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 me. We need to think about other people and forget about ourselves. It doesn't matter about us. Think about them. Keep our own house in order, yes, but witness to the lost night and day. And all the backslidden Christians, if you don't get off your high horse, your, your haughty, arrogant ways and repent, the Bible says hundreds of times you will not step foot into heaven. I'm not convicting you. You are by your own filthy life. Excuse me. So the time is now to get ready, my friends. Time is short. What are you going to do? Let's pray. 
Jesus, I love you. I thank you for this video and for all the information and let me put everything together and for showing me things to the Holy Spirit, your watchman, to know what's going on, giving me signs and, and just showing me what's happening so I can tell the flock and warn them. That's all I can do is warn them. I can lead them to the living water of Jesus Christ. I can't make them drink. Please help people to wake up. And if Christians who are backslidden, if people who don't know you as Lord and Savior, and those of us who do know you as Lord and Savior and live for you the right way, if they don't repent and come to you or come back to you, and if we don't get out there and witness to the lost and pray for them daily, I pray you'd rebuke, correct, convict, teach all of us. That you would drag us to sackcloth and ashes, hound us, don't give us any happiness, peace, joy, comfort, satisfaction, mercy, nothing in our lives until we do the right thing. I ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, my friends, this is the most important part of the video. If you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, now's the time to pray with me. Pray this prayer. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I know I've done bad things in my life. And I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. I believe you went back to heaven to be at the right hand side of God the Father. And I believe since that time you've been making a place in heaven for all Christians forever. Please forgive me of my sins, Jesus. Please cleanse my heart, wash my heart white as snow, come live in my heart, make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. That's the prayer, my friends. When you pray that prayer, Jesus says in the Bible, all who come to me and ask shall be saved. You believed, you repented, you're saved. Now, when you get saved, you need to get you a King James Version Bible. It's a living, breathing Word of God. The way you feed your body with food and with water every day, this Bible will feed your spirit and your soul. Read it every day. Pray to Jesus Christ daily. He's your new best friend. He wants to talk to you every single day. Get water baptized in a Christian church, immersion baptized, dunked under water as soon as you can. Being sprinkle baptized like the Catholics and stuff do, it doesn't count. Do it over the right way, my friends. Pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit from head to toe. It's called sanctified. You get that by praying, by reading the Bible, by living for Jesus every day. Do this in what little time we have left on this earth before the imminent rapture. Take your King James Version Bible to church, and when the pastor preaches, or if I talk on here, or anyone talks or writes about the Bible, you compare what we say to your Bible. If it don't match, you close your Bible, you walk out of church immediately, you unfriend, you unsubscribe, you run away as fast as you can. Because anyone who would lie to you, in Jesus' name, anyone who would lie to you about God's own word, the Holy Bible, they're going to drag you to hell with them, my friends. Your only hope is to run away from them as fast as you can. If you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, you want me to pray for anything from a terminal illness to a sick pet, anything in between, send me a message. I have the gift of faith, mustard seed faith. I didn't earn it or deserve it, but praise the Lord when I prayed for it, he gave it to me. And I will pray for you every day if you ask me to for a miracle in your life. And I know that God will perform that miracle if it's within his holy will. And if God does perform that miracle, it will be all because of his power, honor, glory, majesty, might, strength, love, mercy, compassion, kindness, gentleness. Nothing to do with me. I'm the very least in God's kingdom. I'm a tiny fish swimming in a huge ocean. I'm a slave for Jesus Christ. Please share this video. Please, please, please share this video or the link to this channel or, or both with friends, neighbors, co-workers, loved ones, with strangers. Drop it in a blog somewhere. And it'll plant a seed. You can walk away and God will water it. It'll grow. The cotton candy, powder puff, syrupy, fluff, garbage, the lies that are spread all across churches, all across the internet, that's not the word of God that helps anybody, my friends. It doesn't lead anybody to heaven. It leads everybody straight down to hell. The word of God that leads to heaven, the word that points to Jesus Christ so they can be saved by his blood, that makes people want to repent of their sins, is the King James Version Bible, verse chapter book, cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation, all 66 books, the way I preach it on this channel. And it's not because I'm anything, because God's everything. I love you guys. I pray for you every day. I pray this video will bless you and, and just just it speed up your your, your 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 excitement and get you ready and get you motivated also to get out and share the good news with those that are lost before time runs out. I love you guys. Thanks.